Oh, Mr. Gage is over there eating grass. He's not feeling good. For the first time in the two years I've known this fella, he didn't eat this morning. He left his food right there in the bowl and said, not a chance. Definitely not feeling good. Well, with the amount of stuff this guy eats, I'm not surprised that he's not feeling well. He could have eaten anything, I don't know. Drinking out of the swamp. He felt good enough to come for a walk. I opened the door and he was gone, so he can't be that sick. All right guys, I'm up here on the hard bedrock uh, behind the swamp, my house, trying to stay out of the low wet areas because the mosquitoes are absolutely terrible today. Uh, I thought it'd be a great day to just do a perimeter walk and see if we hear any knocking, any noises. It's very windy though, so I'm not sure what we'll capture, but I, I wanna start this episode also with uh, an email that I received. Uh, it's an encounter story, and I encourage you guys, I've done this before, uh, send me any encounters that you have. Real true stuff only, right guys? I feel that if everybody shares the information they have, whether it's a very brief encounter like this was, um, if you can remember the details, sooner or later we'll begin to piece together this Bigfoot phenomenon, right? Well, whether you're East Coast, West Coast, somewhere in between, Canada, US, whatever, right? There will be enough similarities and, and truths that we will eventually find, I think. Um, and, and it's already out there, a lot of the information, right? Um, but anyway, we're going to start with with an email I received and I'll encourage you guys, like I say, send me any stories you have. If you can remember great detail, you know, uh, the more detail the better and we'll share them here on the channel. Gary, as I get older, I see the need to tell of an experience that happened to me as a child. I am 52 now. Whether this was a Bigfoot encounter or not, I do not know, but it does seem to fit. Location was... Scotio County, sorry if I butchered that, Ohio, between Minford and South Webster, Ohio. Farmland on the edge of what today is a nature preserve. Time, late afternoon, still daylight, so I'd say around 7 p.m. It was in the summer, but not exactly sure of a month. The year was 1975, and I was six years old. My mom and dad had left me and my siblings at my cousin's house while they went someplace. This was an old farmhouse and had stairs in the center. They went up to an attic that had been finished for a bedroom. This bedroom took up the entire width of the house. It had a sloping ceiling, one window on each end wall. The highest part right in the center of the house. This, was, this has been torn down now. I was sitting on the floor playing with a toy truck and my feet were on the top stairs step. Both windows were open. I turned my head and see this thing looking at me. It was the ugliest thing I had ever seen. All I could see was the head and two hands on the windowsill. I now estimate it would have been about 15 feet away. No noises were made by this thing or me. I do not remember any bad smell, but I've always had sinus issues. I was scared because I thought it was one of my cousins trying to scare me. I wasn't scared because I thought it was one of my cousins trying to scare me. I looked down the stairs, then back over to the window sill, and it was gone. So I then get up and walk down the stairs, still thinking it was one of my cousins. I look in the living room, and everyone is there watching TV. I then walk out to the front door and around the house to where the window is. I was looking for the ladder they would have had to use to get to the window. No ladder. Still not really scared, but confused on how my cousins could have pulled this trick off. As I think about it now, the window sill would have been about 12 feet high. Old houses were typically shorter back then, but I arrived at this height by this. 12 inches ground to first floor. 8 foot tall first floor ceiling height. It was probably less than that. 12 inch attic floor thickness. 24 inch attic floor to window sill. And all of that adds up to 12 foot window sill. As I got older, my buddies and I were in the surrounding woods pretty much every day hunting, camping, etc. We've never seen or found any evidence of a Bigfoot. 
that makes me doubt that it was a Bigfoot I saw that day. And as much time as I spent in the woods, why did I never see a Bigfoot again? I do not know what I saw, but I've recounted it just as I remember it. Okay, and that's important for a couple of reasons, guys. Because he's not claiming to see Bigfoot all the time. That's important to me, right? <laughs> um, he seems like a normal Joe, right? He has this encounter. It's very real. It happened to him. He doesn't know what it is. He's not claiming to know what it is. He's just giving us the facts, and I think that's cool. So if you have a story that you can share some facts with us, guys, send it to me, and I'll, I'll read them at the beginning of uh, the Bigfoot series videos, okay? As you can see behind me, guys, the bush is filling out really nice. Um, I can't see Tom's house, and he's 100 feet away now. So the leaves, it doesn't take long, less than two weeks, and the bush looks like a completely different area up here now. Uh, very easy to get turned around when the leaves are on full like this. And any driving we do uh, down these back roads, you really can't see that far into the woods. You've got to have an opening, a swamp or a creek or a lake or something that you can scan the edge of. Other than us putting the drone up and the same thing, we need to have an open field swamp or something that we can look down on. Otherwise you can't see anything, you just see foliage, right? That's the time of year. But it makes me think that these things would be moving around a lot more now because of that. Because there's a lot more freedom, right? They can go places and not be seen. I think any other time of year, you'd pretty much have to travel just at night. It's, it's got to be, right? Otherwise, we'd have a million encounters, right? And we don't. Oh, I don't really want to go down into that swamp. The mosquitoes are so bad right now. I'm just letting Gage lead me. Where I, whatever he smells, I'm following him. Guess we're going that way. What are you sniffing? And which way did it go? I'd never tell him, but he had me a little worried there. We'll see when we go home if he eats. I said to my wife, he could have eaten an old sock or something out of the laundry room. Who knows? And he's just not... <laughs> maybe he's not feeling good. I don't know. With him, you never know. I drink any swamp water. Eat anything that smells remotely interesting. The more disgusting, the better. So, how do you diagnose that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm literally telling you guys the disgusting things that he'll eat. I look over. I can't believe I'm going to touch this. Coyote or wolf shit. And he was trying to eat it. You get out of there. <laughs> you guys hear that? Helicopter. Sorry for the bad uh, view of the chopper going by there. That was a military helicopter, 100%. I saw it. It was like a green... Canada has the worst green military equipment, and that's what it was. What are they doing out here? Definitely not looking for grow ops, because nothing's growing yet this time of year, right? Uh, if guys are planting the pot, they're just tiny, tiny little plants right now, so... I don't know. I don't know why else they're out here combing through the swamp. Learning how to fly helicopters? I don't know. You guys are pretty lucky to see that because I believe the Canadian military only has one and a half helicopters in service right now. You got one that works and the other one's just for parts. True story. Kind of getting that creepy feeling coming over me right now. 
I just missed it. There's a train going by and the train whistle was very loud. It echoed through the swamp. Gage breaking a stick. But I heard a whistle at the same time. <whistles> kind of like that. <whistles> it was kind of like that, very high pitched. I never know what to leave in these videos. You know, if, if I capture something, it goes in here. But lots of times, I've just shut the camera off or it's on my shoulder and I hear something. And I feel like an idiot mentioning it because I don't have the proof. But then, the reason I mention it is because sometimes it happens again. And we get the follow-up, right? I actually will capture it. All right, we're gonna move on. Well, doesn't that look like an inviting spot to sit down and just listen for a little bit? Maybe the mosquitoes won't be so bad right here in the sun. You're in my seat. Hey buddy. You guys know I don't normally do that either. But we've been hearing so many knocks coming out of the swamp. You know what? I'm gonna try some different stuff. The problem with that is, are we gonna encourage other people who are out here to whistle and knock back? I don't know. We don't know unless we try, right? So today I've whistled and I've knocked, which I don't normally do and we'll see what happens. All right, we've got a 15 minute walk home, guys. I'll get him home, see if he actually wants to eat now. But we'll see if that stirs anything up over the next day or two. I might go out in the evening and just knock around my house. I'll tell Tom what I'm doing so he's not knocking back. <laughs> All right, buddy, you ready to go home and have some lunch? Are you gonna actually eat? Okay, let's go.